gelled with me when I was I was a kid and somebody handed me a tape that was from 1984. It was a cassette tape. I said cassette. And it had songs from um, you know, Cindy Lauper and Alton John and who else was on it? Um, in Excess. It was Steve Perry. There were songs from everyone on it because it was a, a various artist mixtape. I said tape. Um, I, I've, I'm still in love with the 80s and I'm hoping to perhaps get like a hairdo like that guy from Flock of Seagulls. That would be awesome. I think I could pull it off. If anyone could pull it off, it would be me, right? You no, know, I fell in love with music from the 80s to start with and then I backtracked and went very quickly to the Beatles and to, um, you know, a lot of soul singers like Aretha Franklin and then I went back to the 80s and fell in love with Eurythm Eurythmics. Um, yeah, I, I love a bit of everything. Great melody, um, expression and artists that take chances and that's kind of my goal. I'd, I'd really like to be an artist that continually evolves and flock of seagulls haircut. I mean, really, do you think I could pull it off? <laughs> I get an idea to start with because I have trouble keeping my attention in one place at one time I generally have like an app in like like my phone or on my computer I have a, like a little they're really poor quality mp3 recorders but it doesn't matter what you use to get your initial idea down even if you're writing on like a napkin in a bar which I do if I get if something pops into my head it'll it's I'm scribbling on whatever's in front of me because that whole, like, I'll remember it. I used to say that when I first started writing songs, you know, don't worry, I'll remember it, I would tell myself, and you just don't because your short-term memory is, what was I talking about? I used Cubase to record, like, some of my demos and acoustic demos, um, and I program in Cubase as well. I mean, I can use Pro Tools as well, I'm just not as fluent in it as a program. Um, but if, if the song is good at its most basic form, whether it's, you know, guitar and vocals, which is me predominantly, or if it's piano and vocals, the song, if it's really great then, you know, then it's worth considering recording with, you know, full fidelity and full, um, something better than, than an iPhone app. <laughs> I love uh, Brandon Flowers and I love The Killers, uh, Faith Hill, Keith Urban, Stevie Wonder, yeah there's so many I don't, I don't know how to answer that. Next. Because I'm amazing, <laughs> Howard, um, Howard Willing, my current record producer, actually heard some music of mine online and Initially we started chatting and I, you know, flew over to Los Angeles and we started recording and he's worked with people like OK Go and Smashing Pumpkins and Sheryl Crow and a couple of names you might recognise. Um, but he really likes great songs and great artists and he apparently thinks that I'm one of those, which I think is awesome. It's amazing when you're working with somebody that can bring so many different elements to the table in terms of quality musicians, quality recording studios, it's, I'm extremely lucky and no matter what faces I pull and when I'm like, because I'm rad, <laughs> it's, you know, the success comes from the team around you 100% and I believe that and I'm a strong advocate for, um, go team. He doesn't let me get away with like the ridiculous things in the studio, like if, if he really doesn't like a melody or a word, he'll be like, you can do better than that. And few people have pushed me in my career. I mean, I'm my biggest critic, but few people have really kicked me in the butt and gone, Katie, Katie. And so I appreciate the challenge and it, I'm kind of stronger as a writer and a performer because of it. Did I answer any of the questions? <laughs> <laughs>